In the time since I made my last Red Ball Double Jumping tutorial video, some discoveries have been made that have effectively obsoleted it. Thus, I've decided to make a new video that will cover the new information, and should hopefully be more concise and easy to follow. So, without further ado, this is how to double jump in almost every single Red Ball game. The first game in the series, Red Ball, often referred to as Red Ball 1, has no true way of double jumping. However, there are a few exploits that can allow Red Ball to get more height than intended. The first of these exploits is corner jumping, which is exactly what it sounds like. By jumping off the corner of an object in just the right way, Red Ball will get a higher jump than normal, while also maintaining most of his velocity. This is most notably used in level 4 to get through this stair section quickly. Secondly, by pressing jump in a very specific window, after landing on a bounce pad, Red Ball can get a much higher jump than intended, allowing parts of level 7 to be skipped. Moving over to Red Ball 2, the first form of double jumping can be found, though it is usually referred to as pause jumping, as it relies on the pause menu to store a jump. Here is how it works. Press the jump button, and, a few frames later, right before Red Ball leaves the ground, hit the pause button, while continuing to hold the jump button. There are now three possibilities for what is about to happen. Possibility 1. Red Ball is still on the ground, but there is no jump sound. This means that the game was paused too early, and the trick has to be tried again. Possibility 2. There is a jump sound, but Red Ball has left the ground. This means that the game was paused too late, and the trick has failed. And finally, there is possibility 3, where Red Ball is still on the ground, and the jump sound has been played. This means that the trick has been performed successfully. Wait for the jump sound to finish playing, and, while continuing to hold jump, unpause the game to complete the pause jump. Red Ball will reach insane heights using this trick, far higher than the height of two normal jumps combined. This trick is used all over the speedrun, but its greatest use has to be in level 9, where this slow RNG cannon section can be completely skipped over with two pause jumps, saving a boatload of time. Taking a detour from the mainline Red Ball series, Red and Blue Balls is a local multiplayer puzzle game, sort of like Fireboy and Water Girl, just not as good, and both characters can't be played at the same time. Control is switched between using the spacebar. This game has the same pause jump that Red Ball 2 has, but it only causes Red Ball to jump a few pixels higher than a normal jump, making it almost completely useless. Because of this game's slow nature and inconsistent puzzles, speedrunners didn't want to get anywhere near it for quite a long time. However, this all changed when speedrunner Motor Jam discovered buddy jumping, often dubbed motor jumping, after, well, motor jam. If the active character jumps at just the right time while racing toward the inactive character, the inactive character will be used as somewhat of a slope, converting much of the active character's horizontal velocity into vertical velocity. Depending on when and how the jump is performed, it can yield varying amounts of height and distance. This trick can often be used to completely skip the puzzle in a given level, such as in level 12, where both of the gems can be immediately collected upon loading the level with the use of buddy jumping. The next Red and Blue Balls games, Red and Blue Balls 2 and 3, equipped the characters with arms and feet. There is no double jump in these games. Returning to the mainline Red Ball series, Red Ball 3 has a very similar pause jumping strategy to Red Ball 2, with only one major difference. Instead of having to press the pause button a few frames after pressing the jump button, they can now be pressed on the exact same frame. One important thing to note is that the ground in Red Ball 3 is anything but flat. Thus, Red Ball is frequently a couple of pixels off of the ground when moving in any given direction. For the pause jump to work, Red Ball must be on solid ground when the game is paused, or else no jump will be scored. Another important thing to note is that, in level 16, Red Ball automatically jumps on the platforms. Because of this, the pause jump only involves hitting the P button on the exact same frame that Doodle Ball touches a platform. 
there is no need to hit the spacebar to jump. By doing this on the first platform, Doodle Ball can zoom to the first checkpoint. Another interesting tidbit is that, by pausing and unpausing before Doodle Ball touches the bottom of a platform, a pause jump will happen without the need for a frame-perfect input. This exploit is used twice in the ending section of the level. While everything mentioned beforehand was either a pause jump or a physics exploit, Red Ball 4 Volume 1 is the first Red Ball game with a true form of double jumping. After jumping a single time, there is a short window when another jump can be executed, yielding a double jump. This trick is very rhythm and muscle memory based, and it may take a while to get the hang of it. It is possible to perform this by just mashing the spacebar, but it is generally less consistent, so it is better to just learn the real timing. However, there is a small caveat to this trick, in that, similar to Red Ball 3, the ground in Red Ball 4 Volume 1 is filled with bumps and ridges, though it is not to the extent that Red Ball 3's ground is. If Red Ball is even a pixel off the ground, a single jump will be executed, but a double jump will be impossible. Likewise, Red Ball can jump for a short window after rolling off an object, but because Red Ball isn't on solid ground, a double jump cannot be executed. Double jumping allows for many puzzles throughout the game to be skipped, and it also allows for speed to be maintained for much longer periods of time. Some good examples of this are the gap jumps in levels 10 and 12. Red Ball 4 Volume 2 behaves very similarly to Red Ball 4 Volume 1 in terms of double jumping, with one pretty significant difference. Platforms with a non-solid bottom cannot be double jumped on. This presents a couple of challenges, such as not being able to double jump over this tree in level 8 to skip this puzzle. However, this has been worked around by double jumping on top of the previous tree, and then double jumping off of that tree to skip the puzzle. This trick is quite challenging because the double jump has to be performed without any visibility of Red Ball's current position. For a long time, it was believed that Red Ball 4 Volume 3, the final Red Ball 4 Flash Volume, did not have a method of double jumping. The timing from Volumes 1 and 2 just didn't work in Volume 3. Then, everything changed when the Fire Nation- Wait, um, I mean when I accidentally discovered while streaming that a different, more spaced out timing was required to double jump in Volume 3. What? I just- I just double jumped. Did you see that? This same timing also works in Volumes 1 and 2, but it is completely useless in those volumes because it is more difficult and it generates less velocity than the standard timing. The discovery of Volume 3 Double Jumping did save a good chunk of time using strategies like skipping the button in Level 7. However, Volume 3's more restrictive nature from a movement standpoint made it less useful than the double jumping in Volumes 1 and 2. Red Ball 4 Mobile faced a similar situation to Volume 3, where it was believed for a long time that double jumping in the game was impossible. And, just like Volume 3, it later turned out that there was a double jump timing method that actually worked. However, there was just a couple of teensy weensy problems. First of all, the timing was believed to be frame perfect, which wouldn't be too difficult to hit if it weren't for the second problem. Unlike the Flash Red Ball 4 volumes, which run at 30 frames per second, Red Ball 4 Mobile runs at 60 frames per second. One sixtieth of a second tricks are somewhat doable in most games, given enough practice. However, most games are played with a controller or a keyboard, not a touch screen. To determine the trick's difficulty, here is a sped up video of me trying to get it a single time. And finally, if that wasn't enough, this trick would need to be performed hundreds of times in the same run to utilize its maximum potential. Hey, I just said my username. It isn't hard to see why this version of the trick was never used in any speedruns. That was until it was discovered that playing the game on a laggier phone, which ran the game around 30 frames per second instead of the intended 60 frames per second, would make double jumping much, much easier, as the double jumping window was around the same as it was in Volume 3. However, this introduced another problem, hardware differences. Now, the fastest way to play the game from a speedrunning standpoint was with a phone from 8 or so years ago. 
Thankfully, there came a solution to both the frame rate and touchscreen problems. The Android emulator known as Bluestacks. The game's touchscreen controls can be bound to keys on the user's keyboard, and the frames per second can be set to whatever value is desired in the engine settings, with the current FPS floor designated by the rules being 30 frames per second. In Red Bull 4 Mobile, there are two new volumes to exploit with double jumping that did not see a flash release, Battle for the Moon and Into the Caves. In level 52, the level end portal can be reached much sooner than intended, making it one of the shortest levels in the game. And in level 64, this green key can be obtained much sooner than intended, skipping about half of the level. And finally, to close off this video, we have Red Ball 5, which is a licensed Red Ball game that was not made by the original developer, Evgeny Fedosev. There is currently no way to double jump in this game, but at least one can mash the shit out of the spacebar upon completing level 1, skipping over a level each time the spacebar is pressed. This ultimately allows this 14 minute long game to be completed in a cool 48 seconds. I hope that you learned something new while watching this video. Jumping exploits and glitches are largely what have made the Red Ball series so interesting and fun to speedrun and watch. If you have any questions about any Red Ball speedrunning strategies, feel free to ask in the Red Ball speedrunning Discord server, linked in the description. Thank you for finding some time in your day to relax watching It's Max. Okay, I'm never saying that again.